Hey everyone, how are you doing? It is Sunday, September 1st. <laughs> I hate to tell you, it is September 1st. Uh, hey, this is Lori Mueller with StampinDreams.com coming to you on Sunday, September 1st. So um, August is here and gone and we are starting a new month on a new day and um, yeah, it's a nice, pretty, pretty nice day outside as well. So, but it also marks the um, precursor, the few days before our annual catalog goes live, right? So if you have not gotten your catalog yet, um, reach out to me, let me know if you need one. Uh, a big batch of them went out this last, uh, this last week. So you should be getting yours if you haven't already in the mail. And um, then I do have a number of them, about a dozen of them that I'm gonna be hand delivering later today. So I'm super excited to get them because September 4th is when this goes live, September 4th. And there's lots of beauty. I can't open any of the pages, but um, you kind of get the cover, right? So if you haven't gotten one, uh, reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to send you one. Unless you already have a demonstrator that you work with, um, it would probably be preferred that you get it from them. But if you want to have me as your demonstrator I would love to help you and um, inspire you and uh, keep your stamping inspiration on a high so hello 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 everyone oh Julie sneaking in a peek <laughs> so hello everyone so glad to have you here um, I have a number of things that I want to cover with you one is the holiday catalog it goes live on September 4th that is Wednesday that's when you can start um, making your purchases, unless you're a demonstrator. So if you wish to start purchasing from the holiday catalog before September 4th, join my team. Come um, be a happy, super um, ecstatic shopper, earning a 20% discount on all of your purchase. And also you can fill your $99 kit with $125 worth of holiday catalog product. So that's a great way to um, get a, a, a head start on your holiday shopping as well. And the next thing is that I am working on my next milestone. I am so close. I'm getting super, super close to my next milestone. So I have a number of specials that I'm gonna be offering throughout the month. Um, because I, I really like to acquire my goal um, by the end of this month, um, but definitely next month, but I'm shooting for this month. So I have a number of things that with your um, purchases, you know, I have a $50 purchase uh, guideline where you earn the free Stamping Around the World 12 tutorial bundle. And I know a number of you have been um, getting that bundle um, via email from me when you make a purchase of $50 or more. But I want to add on top of it the um, embossing folder sampler. Um, it is a, a great little tool for anyone. You don't have to be a demonstrator. You could be, you know, your... Um, a lover of Stampin' Up! and all of the embossing folders. <clears throat> but it's a great way to kind of see it um, as a sample before you start applying it to any of your cards or your scrapbook pages or any 3D uh, giftable items. But it's a great resource that I have already put together. It's matted and it also comes with labels on the back that tells you which embossing folder it is. And um, yeah, so there's all the, all the different samplers in there. So along with your $50 purchase, you'll not only get the 12 tutorial bundle, but you'll also get the embossing folder sampler. Now, if you're not into embossing folders, um, maybe uh, you're a scrapbooker and you don't have a tool to do embossing, uh, but you love all of our cardstock colors, I do have my cardstock sampler as an alternative. So when you make your $50 or more purchase through my online store, I'll send out a message or you can let me know via email which of these choices you would like. Would you like the cardstock sampler or would you like the embossing folder sampler? So either one is a great tool to have. Maybe you're trying to figure out a color combination. You can um, you know, close off kind of like a paint sampler 
and see if you like that color combination or making multiples. Now the color sampler will also include the current in colors, both the 2018 to 2020 and the 2019 to 2021. They will include the in colors as well. So with your $50 purchase, just let me know which one you would like. Now if you, you know, make any purchase whatsoever, um, I will include the newest in color sampler as a little gift to you um, as well as um, another gift that I usually give but if you're getting this sampler it'll already include this in there so but um, anyway I thought I would throw those out as a little offering to help me achieve my goal for um, uh, reaching my little milestone that is coming up and and go from there and then we also have the online club so if you are already making purchases join our online club and you can be uh, you'll be assigned a hostess month uh, sometime in the future I think our um, next one is in line for December so um, during your month, of course, you want to recruit all of your friends and family that love Stampin' Up and have them place orders along with you so then your uh, party sales are increased and you get a lot more Stampin' Rewards that way. So, but hello, hello everyone. Yay, thank you Mary for sprinkling the love, shedding, uh, spreading the love of our uh, passion for paper crafting. That is always one of my goals is to try and introduce what we love to do to new people. And also too, I I just want to um, continue sharing what I love and, um, and demonstrating new little techniques, which is something that I am excited about today, my card. Um, it was one that I did during my stamp class this last week. And I, oh my gosh, the results never come out the same, but uh, it was a fun technique that um, had some people a little bit um, kind of on edge, but uh, when they got done, it's like, oh wow, that that's kind of cool. I like that. I'll have to practice more. But um, like I said, every uh, card that was created that night did not look identical at all. So it's um, it's a fun technique. Uh, Stampin' Up! has new pigment sprinkles. It's our watercolor crystals. And I am super in love with them. I, I do love them a lot more than our brusho that we offered a while back. Now I haven't um, played with my brusho in a while, but I am super excited about these sprinkles because I just opened them. Uh, early last week and was super ecstatic about the storage and um, how the container was designed. So, uh, yeah, I'm so I can't wait to show you. So I think um, on that note, uh, if you're just catching on, hey Carol, um, your package hopefully has been, um, uh, you've received my package. So you were the prize patrol winner from the previous week. And so on that note, while I'm spe uh, mentioning it, um, the next prize patrol winner name that was drawn is Cheryl Randall's Merzenich. Merzenich, I think. Um, Cheryl Randall's Merzenich is how I'm going to pronounce it. So sorry if, it, if I butchered it up, but if you're on here or if anybody knows her, um, tag her and let her know that her name was drawn for some prize patrol. You know, was, um, a grouping of Stampin' Up! products can be sent your way. So, so welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Um, if you are not familiar with me, my name is Lori Mueller with StampinDreams.com and you are currently on my Facebook page. And if you um, are not receiving my newsletter, go to the uh, button on my Facebook page and click newsletter and you can sign up that way. Or you can go to my blog at www.stampandreams.com and you can sign up for my newsletter there. And then while you're there, subscribe to my blog. <laughs> so that way you know when I have posted something new and inspiring or any promotions that Stampin' Up! is um, going through right now. So, um, and Debbie got her package, yay! Yay, yay, all right. So um, yeah, and in the catalog um, packages that went out, uh, I always include a little treat package with a tag or some decorative um, 
uh, tag or a little card that is using new Stampin' Up! product out of that current catalog. So um, I've already gotten a response. <laughs> I have to laugh because one of my customers, um, her husband actually gets the mail. <laughs> and then he sends me in a, this funny little note every time. And he's, um, he's kind of a journalist in a way. He is a, uh, a veteran and um, his wife uh, is a retired uh, veteran nurse. And <laughs> just, so I got my email yesterday uh, from him that explained how he delivered this large package to his wife and he was anticipating that there would be a treat as always. And, and just, you have to imagine how he's um, writing this as if it's a little um, storybook. And um, he said, and sure enough, you did not disappoint. Um, although my cardiologist may not approve and may have slapped my mouth knowing how much um, sodium I ate. <laughs> but yesterday, or he said, today was my free day where he could um, kind of cheat and eat whatever. And so today he was going to have to discipline himself, take an extra water pill if needed, um, depending on the weight that he weighs in, and then um, proceeded to tell that he was invited to another event today, which might have made it a little hard. And so, <laughs> but it was, it was funny. He's um, a sweet, sweet man. I love him dearly. I've met him in person and he is just a hoot. I love him to death. So, um, but anyway, it was, it was a fun little thing and uh, I love to hear from him every time he opens the package that is meant for his wife. <laughs> but she gets the catalog, he gets the treats. <laughs> so, but, um, and he did compliment on my tag too. So, uh, but he did say he gave that to his wife. So, um, so that was the fun for the day and uh, just makes me laugh and giggle and have the grin ear to ear. So, but I love it when I can, um, display my passion for paper crafting, add it to a fun little package, you know, a little food package, stuff it in the mail with, you know, a beautiful catalog such as this one, and uh, and then just know that it's full of joy uh, received on the other end. So, so happy Sunday to everybody. All right, so I think, are we ready to do a little stamping? Because I am anxious to share this uh, fun technique with you. It's really not a technique, but I'm gonna call it a technique. So, all right, we're, we're ready. We're gonna flip the camera. All right, and add a little extra lighting here. Oops, said to rotate my phone. There we go, okay. So I am very, very thankful to my daughter uh, once again for sharing her phone <laughs> um, because mine has been overheating although she did warn me that um, she can't keep doing this so I got to figure out another solution so if anybody out there in the tech world has an idea of what I can do to ensure that my videos are not going to be busted up into three different segments I am all ears so all right so once again, if you have not gotten the holiday catalog, let me know. I'd be happy to send one out to you. Here is a little description of my online club that I mentioned. So if you wish to have your money go towards uh, something, rewards, such as our Stampin' Rewards, by all means, make certain that you sign up with me and we'll get you on board with our club. Um, I know our club members would love to have another member. And then um, these are the uh, cardstock sampler that I had mentioned along with labels that I have put on the back of each one. So if you place a $50 order with me, you'll not only get the Stamping Around the World tutorial bundle, but you'll also get your choice of either the embossing folder sampler or the cardstock sampler. And I do label you know, what families each of the card stocks come in, all right? And I do still have my um, older in colors in there, but your sampler will include the new card stock samples as well. And I'll have them all punched and neatly uh, put together and it'll come on a D-ring for you. And um, 
beautiful. And then you'll also get a, um, a little ring that goes with your cardstock or the embossing folder samplers as well. So use this host code for your $50 purchase through my online store. So you can go to www.stampandreams.com and hit shop now. Or if you're in my Facebook page, you can just click the blue button that says shop now. And that will be a um, wonderful thank you from me to help me reach my next incentive, my next um, milestone. And yeah, that, I'm, I'm anxious to reach that. So, all right, so here is uh, the card that we are going to create today. It was this one right here. Isn't that amazing? I love, love, love. And so look at how um, I'm using our new watercolor paper, right? And I used some Call Me Clover green with some vellum, and I did do some embossing, if you can see the sheen right there. All right, and some of our Pineapple Punch Grogain ribbon, and it's on a vanilla, very vanilla card base. And the story behind this was um, there's a program in our public schools that uh, some students are a member of, and they have to achieve a certain amount of um, recognition and good deeds, not only at school, but at home and out in the public. And uh, there was recently, and when they've achieved all that, then there's a mode of graduation. And so this um, card was inspired by a young man who's in fifth grade who achieved all of that. And he is the cutest guy. Oh my gosh. And so I created this with him in mind. And um, yeah, so that's where this came from. And it was stemmed from the Bloom and Grow stamp set. Aw, Sophie, Sophie, come here. Her, um, her mama was just here and took her for a W-A-L-K. <laughs> and now she's left and, and so Sophie is kind of missing her. She's crying at the door. But So this Bloom and Grow stamp set is not just for females. You know, even though it's smothered with flowers, yeah, but there are some neat sentiments in here that can relate to weddings or birthdays or, you know, great achievements, um, you know, thank yous, and then let's celebrate you. And so that's where this one stemmed from is that it was nice and big and um, made a statement that it can be towards a female or male, both young and old. And yeah, so I was super excited to create this and then hand this over to him on Friday. So, so that's where my inspiration stems from. All right, so we are going to get started with, um, so the pieces that we have are the very vanilla and they measure four and a quarter by 11. And then I scored at five and a half. That's a very vanilla thick cardstock. Then I have some Call Me Clover cardstock that we will be die cutting using our layering squares. I have a piece of vellum that measures um, like three and an eighth by three and an eighth or so. Oh, I forgot my measuring tape. Let me measure this. It measures, oh, I'm sorry, two and three quarters by yeah, two and three quarters or something of that nature. So, but we may have to trim it compared to what the die cut is. So, and then we have our new watercolor paper that is, um, it's a fluid 100 watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton and it is um, different than our old retired paper. It has a smoother texture that um, is, fun to work with. I did not have any difficulties working with it at all. So that's what we're going to start with because it'll take a little bit of time to dry. And so I want to get this started. So I'm starting out with a paper towel over my surface to help cover and uh, catch any overages of water that we're going to be doing. And I should show you the pigment sprinkles. So this is what they come in, and it's a box like this. And then they 
come in this cool uh, container and I used um, the Bermuda Bay, I used Granny Apple Green, and then I used the um, Daffodil Delight. But I love how the colors are marked on top of the lid and these are all Stampin' Up! colors. So um, there's no question which one that you're gonna be picking out because there's six of them in there. And then I love these little containers. They at first felt like glass, but they're um, that heavy duty plastic. And um, it does indicate, you know, what colors are in there. But, you know, Daffodil Delight and it looks orange. How strange is that, right? Here's um, Bermuda Bay and it almost looks like a burgundy or a chocolate chip or early espresso, I should say. And then we have Granny Apple Green, and again, it's in the orange colors. But um, but yeah, the end results are pretty cool. Then I really got tickled pink when I opened the lid, and they're like little salt and pepper shakers. So you lift up the lid, and then you have your three um, uh, little holes you know, to sprinkle out of. All right, I'm gonna put these out here. So my little salt and pepper shakers, and I do have to say that when you sprinkle these, you have to go lightly, because um, you can always add more color, but uh, you definitely want to go lightly with the sprinkling. All right, and so I had, uh, let's see, yep, I had in my order, now it doesn't look like Bermuda Bay is in here, because when I was, um, moving the water back and forth, they kind of blended together and made a darker green, which is why I pulled out the Call Me Clover for the, bo uh, for the border. But we'll see how it comes out today. So I've got my watercolor paper, and I've got my aqua painter that um, has got some water in there. And hello, hello everyone. So if you're catching me, hey Mary, how are you? So if you're catching me live, you'll see the little red button in the corner that says live. But otherwise, if you're catching me later, there won't be that live button. But that'll be an awesome um, thing for you because then you can uh, watch and stop and rewind and all that good stuff. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to squeeze on my aqua painter. I mean, I'm going to squeeze hard and get some water dribbling out of here. And I'm gonna have some droplets, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do here in just a second. So let's get some squeezing out here. All right, yeah. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this number. Oops, I must have gotten some sprinkles on there, see that? All right, because I'm very liberal with that. So now, next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sprinkle Like this and it like I said it doesn't take a whole lot and then I'm gonna sprinkle some Bermuda but whoa all right and then I'm gonna sprinkle the call me or the granny apple green oh and there's even some yellow in there it looks like all right now I may have to let me Push this down just a smidge so it stops running that direction. All right, so now what I did is try to get this to move around on its own, but of course, it's got a, like a one track mind, it just never wants to get beyond the tracks and without muddying it. So then what I do, because those pools would not go away, I did this number. And then you wanna kind of, you know, wash off your um, aqua painter so that you're not muddying up too badly your other colors. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of spread the, the puddles and give it some character and then I'm just because I'm just I love this fine tip and that's all I'm doing I'm just kind of adding 
some flare and just kind of doing this number. Yeah. And I'm going off with off the page so that and I want to make certain I leave some white space in here. Now this so that I'm not covering the entire surface everywhere. I want to make sure I have some white space. Now I see a little Bermuda Bay right there. So, but the rest of it kind of got muddied. But it'll be good. It'll be fun. And like I said, you know, every result is so different that it will be a masterpiece all of its own every single time. And we just kind of, oh, I see a little Bermuda Bay right there too. I must have carried it up. All right, and I can see sprinkles here that I'm trying to add some liquid to so that they burst and don't sit. Because if I go to touch it, those crystals are dry and can create a mess on your fingers and transfer onto other surfaces if you're not wary that those crystals were there. All right, so I'm gonna move this aside, move that aside, and put that over here. And I think I'm kind of done. I know I have a pool right here that has me bothered, but I think what I'm gonna do I'm going to take off part of my paper towel and kind of dab it. It just kind of all sat right there in the center. And I want it to dry a little bit faster. And maybe by doing this, I can actually pull out some of that Bermuda Bay that was sprinkled into the center. All right. Oh, that's looking better already. Ooh, I like it, like it, like it. Now I'm going to let this set aside. So what do you think? Looking kind of cool, huh? Now the colors will be a lot more bolder once it has fully dried. Let's see if I can dab up some more. I don't want to transfer too much of the color from one section to the next. But I think, yeah, I may have to get some of the sprinkles off of there like this. And I, oh, yay, it's going to turn out pretty cool. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. And I'm actually going to fold this over because on my little laminated surface, I don't want that to transfer over to my card base. All right, and seeing then I've got purple fingers, which... I can just bring out my chamois and wipe my fingers off. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside so it will dry. And then we can work on the rest of our project, which would be to die cut our square and then heat emboss our sentiment. So I'm gonna bring over the Big Shot my die cutting tool, all right? And I'm going to use the layering squares, dies, all of our layering squares. And if you keep all these the way they come out of the packaging, I'm using this upper quadrant, the two uh, largest in that section. And I'm going to create a frame that is going to require only one pass through my die cutting machine. And what I'm doing is nesting the smaller die inside the larger one and making certain I have a nice border all the way around, a nice even one. 
that constitutes a nice little frame because I'm gonna this would be like my window frame that's looking at uh, the sentiment all right and I'm going to carefully lay that on there so nothing shifts and roll that through and kerplunk and then I'll come back out make it a shorter pass that way and then when you're done you can pick it up and you have one square that you can use for another project later on in the future and then I have the remainder take out this center one then I have my nice little frame right there okay and take off the little shavings there and that's how you collect a frame or build a frame for a project so I can put that aside and now what I did for the embossing of our sentiment so that I had an idea of placement, centering placement of my um, vellum, I pretended like I had this adhered to my vellum piece. All right, and oops, gotta get this just right. Because I was afraid that if I glued the frame down to the vellum that embossing powder would collect around the edges. So I avoided that by just doing a faux placement. And I'll bring in the sentiment, the let's celebrate, and I'm using Versamark, and also using black embossing powder. All right, so now I'm going to ink up. Now with these bigger sentiments, I find it easier to lay the sentiment down and ink up with the Versamark. All right, you could go the other way around, but my block is almost bigger than my ink pad. So whatever's bigger, I lay it down that way. All right, now I'm gonna center this. And give it some nice pressure, because it'll stay um, wet enough that I can then start pouring over top the black embossing powder because the Versamark has a tackiness to it that will stay ta oh and then I forgot my embossing buddy I even have it here <laughs> but I'm so used to not using it um, because I don't have too much trouble with um, extra speckles because it's all related to how much oils you have on your finger and how much you've been playing with the paper that's where the attraction is for the embossing powder but I do see a little speckle right there okay so I'm gonna cover up my Versamark and then move this aside because I want to get my heat gun um, warmed up all right so we're gonna this is nice and a, kind of a dull black right now but once I get my heat gun going you're gonna see how it's going to turn shiny so I'm gonna actually use some tweezers to hold this because it might get a lot warm so hopefully you can see and this with Versamark and vellum it does not take very long at all to melt. Can you see that? How shiny that, yeah, I think I got it all. Oh, my L might need a, a little bit more. All right, I think, oh, and the top of my T. Because if you look at it from a slant, if there's any dullness, you'll see that it needs a little bit more heat. But I do have to caution you that the length of time that you leave heat on that embossing powder, the more apt it is to be soaked in by the paper. Uh, the paper will soak it in and then it'll look 
flat. It won't have a raised component to it and then it won't have the sheen as well. So you have to be very careful that you, once you start seeing it get shiny, move your gun, your um, heat tool away from it so that you can continue um, getting the rest of it melted. All right, so that's one, one word of caution is that you just have to be very careful about the length of time that you direct your heat onto your surface. All right, so now, now this did bow just a little bit, no big deal. I'll just kind of give it a little bow in reverse. Now I'm going to add a little adhesive to my frame because I made the vellum piece about the same size as this frame. So that way I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, slim pickings of getting it to connect. All right, so now the vellum's kind of hard to see on this surface. You almost need a, a colored piece of cardstock underneath. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and add that to it. Oop, I may have to do this. There we go. Yay. All right, and I'll go ahead and trim. Oh, I think I've got, I might trim a little bit of the vellum off of here, a little, looks like it's just perfect. Yep. Get my glue off the surface. And there you have it, our sentiment. I might have to, and with the liquid glue, I love that I can still maneuver it around a little bit. All right, now the next thing is to check on our cards on our watercolor piece. Ooh, look at how it's turning out. I may have to add a little bit of my heat gun to it because it's not quite it's it's damp, and so I don't want that dampness to transfer over into the cardstock base. So I'm going to add just a little heat from behind so that it kind of flattens out a little bit. I'll just keep going back and forth. Oops, see some of it's still wet that I'm gonna have on my surface, but that's okay. I'll just keep going back and forth because I don't want it bowing really bad. Oh, it looks really good. Okay, I think that might be enough. Now I'll bring in, I won't want that to transfer to my surface, so I'll bring my, I could bring my little chamois in and pick that up. There we go. There we go. I'll dry that off with my piece of paper towel that I had. Perfect, and there we go. All right, so we are set to go that we can assemble everything. So here's our very vanilla cardstock base that I've already scored, and now we just burnish at the score line that was at five and a half. Now, before I assemble this to the card base, I do want to add in the pineapple punch grogain ribbon. And I like to work off my spool, just, um, I don't know, there's a thing about it that just makes me work with ribbon so much easier when it's on a spool. I don't know why, but, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and, so with my ribbons, I know that small ones tend to give people a little bit of a headache, so... Um, I can go ahead and give a little knot lesson. <laughs> and so I'm crisscrossing this way. I'm moving the little tail through the inside. Now I'm going to give a nice tug so that my piece is bowing. See how my piece is bowing? Because once I get done with the next series, it'll relax and so it'll lay out nice and flat. So I have 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and I'm 
having my thumb hold down the center there. I've seen some people where they take the um, self-pinching tweezers. Let me see if I can. You just take a self-pinching tweezers if you can get it to stay without bouncing off. You could do that, but um, I'm not used to that, so I'm gonna go with what I what I know. So I'm gonna rest my thumb. I'm gonna bring this over my left thumb. I'm holding it with my right hand and I'm going to pick up the tail and I'm going to thread it through this hole that I've developed. Oops, maybe. All right. Now I'm not wanting to move my thumb just yet and then when I'm ready to cinch it a little bit then I move my thumb. Okay and voila like that. So now I'm going to snip off what I need and I'll snip this one just a little bit shorter. I just happen to have the right amount of tail there. Now, because I don't like where it's placed, you can just kind of shimmy it on your paper like that and put it in the position that you want it. So I'm gonna shimmy it over just a little bit more. And I chose Pineapple Punch because I had the yellow, the Daffodil Delight, up here at the top. But I love how, look how that little orange kind of showed up in there. You know, um, I think green and yellow make orange, right? And then, now the Bermuda Bay looks a little darker green, and then this does look like granny apple green down there, but um, I think I'm excited over the result of this. All right, now from here, I did go ahead and attach this piece all the way, I mean, to the front of my card base, and I do like to use liquid glue versus snail for this because of the watercolor paper and the tendency of it bowing due to the um, the water that had make it you know that had made it bow like this so the liquid glue will ensure that it will stay in place on your surface all right and then plus I like to maneuver it around it allows me I'm getting more all right, now just hold it in place and give it a little shimmy. I think I'm still getting some sprinkles off of there. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's my imagination. So has anybody, you have to sh um, tell me, who has played with our new pigment sprinkles? And if so, how or what have maybe you've um, created something that you'd be willing to share with us? That would be fun. I, I, because when I did a search of this, I did not see a whole lot for pigment pigment sprinkles on uh, with this new uh, product that we offer. So if you have something, I would love to see what you have created with it. So um, next, I want to affix this frame but I did not want it to be you know, flat to the surface because I did not want the background to be my prominent you know, and to take over my sentiment. So that's why I popped it up using Stampin' Dimensionals. Now here's the clincher though. I did not want to use our um, uh, foam adhesive ones because they stand so tall they're I mean they're super tall and I'm not creating a shaker card although I did think about it but I did um, with our mini dimensionals there's this huge area that borders around and so I used that but see the difference in thickness Oop. And that's why I just wanted a subtle raise of the sentiment, not a full-fledged, you know, like I'm going to create a shaker card. But I needed something skinny to go around here because of the fact that the border was skinny. So I just did some slivers along the edge here. And was able to use up these borders. You know, nothing should go to waste when it comes to products like this. These come in so handy 
for so many things. Um, yeah, this whole sheet of Stampin' Dimensionals is going to be used up and not left, you know, tossed into the file 13. <laughs> and if anybody is not following me, file 13 is the same as the trash can. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know I'm showing my age again, but yeah, back in the day, it was always file 13 if it wasn't good enough. All right, get some more in here. And I'm wanting to make certain that I have enough. Um, it's not it's not keen for me to just put these in the corners because I don't want the edges to sag. I want the whole frame to stay popped up. So I'm going to... And if you put dimensionals on the vellum, you'll see through it. And I don't want that also to steal away from the sentiment as well. So if you imagine, you know, you can... You can see dimensionals and granted these are white but that's how you would see it so whatever you can see through it is what you're gonna see and that's why I put dimensionals on the frame all right next we are going to peel all these little papers away and they come off fairly easy so getting ready so State fairs, I think, are still in session. Our state fair is uh, still going on, I think, until September 3rd, I believe. Or no, maybe maybe Monday. Monday must be the last day, which is tomorrow. Oh, my golly. I can't believe it's Monday. All right, now I'm going to center left and right and put into place just like that. And then I can still kind of shift my ribbon up if I wanted, like that. And there we go, there's our card. How fun is that? And it was super easy, it did not take long at all. But see the difference? You know, here I had more run-ins where my water would actually flow better, whereas here it just kept going back and forth like a pinball in a pinball machine. So I did have, I did have to do more stroking with my watercolor or my aqua painter, but I still got the same beautiful result, just a little bit more. I mean, there's more colors in this one than in this one, in the left one, but it still turned out really cool. So hopefully you um, will try this, because like I said, then when for storage, you just pop these little lids back in and put the caps back on. So these are like the little, and I'm gonna, wipe those off so I don't have them sprinkling on something else but yeah these are really cool I love these little containers they just made me so happy wipe my fingers so I don't spread them around on the on the surface here but yeah so here's my host code that if you are uh, looking to purchase these supplies because in the catalog you're going to find these in um, the annual catalog on page. I meant to have this open when I started this. Uh, let's see. They are right here. They're along um, the same page as the Stampin' Blends right here at the bottom. So you get six colors for $23. That's a really good deal because those sprinkles are going to go on and on and on forever. So on page 179, you will find the sprinkles. And it is it's so much fun. So I hope that you will give them a try. You can use my host code here. And then if your order reaches $50, don't forget, you get your choice of the embossing folder sampler or the cardstock sampler. And this will include all color families and including the new in color families. So, all right, I think we're going to go ahead and close out. So let me get flipped around here right there yay okay so uh, Mary yes you have to give these a try um I do have to warn as a um, as a secondary warning again that it is uh, those holes are much bigger than the ones that we would create in Brescia 
So when you're sprinkling, it's a really light tap that you want to put on there. Otherwise, you know, it could just really muddy things. Unless you're only using the one color, and then that's not a problem because you're not worried about the um, mix and match, you know, not the matching, but the, the mixing of the two colors. So, um, so you could sprinkle away if you're only using the one color, but if you're using multiples, then it's a really light tap um, of the sprinkles that go onto your watercolor paper. Now, I have not tried this with our regular cardstock. Um, it's something that I am interested in doing, uh, but the watercolor paper that we are offering is wonderful. It soaks in the water really nicely and it did not have near the bowing after it dried as I remember the old watercolor paper did. It just seemed to warp a lot more and ripple because of all of the water or any um, anything of, of a wetness that you would put on there created a lot of warping. So, um, but otherwise, I hope you guys will give it a try. Uh, it's, you never know, the results are never gonna turn out the same, but that's the whole fun of it. Um, another thing I was thinking of is on canvas. I wonder what it would be like on canvas. You know, you can get those little canvas uh, frames from the dollar store or whatever. Uh, I've got some of those. I may have to give it a try and see about decorating something up for a little home decor piece or a recognition thing, because this little Celebrate You uh, if you got a nice uh, two by two square or um, or even the four by six size canvas, how fun would that be to have you know for inspiration for somebody achieving a goal, whether it's a sales goal or um, anybody on my team who has promoted a new family member to our Stampin' Up family. Uh, yeah, that would be, ah, I'm onto something. I love it, love it, love it. So yeah, keep spreading the love of our passion of paper crafting and playing with all these fun tools with everyone. And then I will uh, draw for Prize Patrol next week as well, based on your comments and indicating that you have spread the love. Thank you for the hearts. Oh my gosh, you guys are so, so good to me. And I thank you very much for spending your Sunday afternoon with me as well. So on that note, I wish you all the fun and um, happiness that you can achieve during this long holiday break. So for those of you that do have to work Labor Day, I um, my heart goes out to you, but just come home and run into your crafting space and have some homemade therapy. <laughs> so, but until then, I bid you farewell. Uh, again, my name is Lori with stampandreams.com and thank you for spending your Sunday afternoon and we'll see you next week. Bye guys, love ya.